Jordo, welcome to week 12 of our second lockdown. Word is, Christmas is cancelled. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, actually, that's actually not bad for a lot of us because it means no more BS, uh, uh, you know, having to go to 65 family gatherings and all the rest of it. We thank you so much for this bountiful harvest of Domino's, KFC and the always delicious Taco Bell. The main thing I used to look forward to for Christmas was going to the Heathcote Boxing Day drags. That was the highlight of the Christmas. Yeah, I know, get out of the house, get out of the Christmas. Exactly, mm. I loved it. <laughs> so Luke, a few weeks ago, you did that pretty good uh, and pretty long, that XB Dandy video about the rebuilding the uh, V8 street engine. But not everyone is uh, overly impressed with, I guess, the technical features you've covered in this video. You are not building, you are rebuilding an engine. Otherwise, show me how you cast, forge, and machine all the parts. That guy's got a point. These guys should have gone to the, what is it, the iron pits of, uh... Yeah, got some steel and done a bit of blacksmithing. What do you reckon? The fires of Mount Doom or something, I don't know what it was, but uh, yeah, exactly. They should have been in there just, just making the rods, otherwise this video is trash. wonder what nationality this guy is. Okay, I've asked so many Brits and Aussies. Did you say asked? <laughs> what the F is a YouTube channel? Tube. Oh, he's talking about- It's called Tube. You're talking about YouTube. Then really you should be saying YouTube. Well, he's obviously uh, talking about us Aussies. Hmm. Aussies. I don't know, mate, um, it's probably where you can see cars getting tuned. 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 Hang on, so how do you, how do they say tune and tune? Tune and... Same so thing. If they're talking about tuning a car and they're talking about YouTube, that's too... I always, uh, what the I heck? always find it funny though when people question the Queen's English. Oh, is that right? Like, they're butchering the English language, they've modified it, and they're questioning where it came from and how, and how pronunciation should be done. But anyway. Probably at home, sipping back on a Mountain Dew soda. Where's my Mountain Dew? And I don't have any Mountain Dew! Speaking of world records, Luke, an ex-Peter Brock race car sells for $2.1 million dollars and it's a new Aussie motorsport auction record. No, it's I don't not. know what. Where, where are you getting that from? Huh? That's two years old. Was it? Where, what articles are you reading that off? Oh no, hang on, this is 2018. What are you? An idiot sandwich. Jura, if you want to put this in bench talk and just. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Well, actually put yourself as just completely unresearched. You know what this is, Jura? You are fake news. Do some research. Hang on, now I'm. Now I'm looking at my own link, it says 2018. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna put this on television, but you don't even know what you're talking about. I did a lot of research for this. A lot this. of research there, Jordan. This, this... Quiet, quiet. No. But here's the deal. Here's the deal, all right? No, hang on. Come on, try getting it out. I'll tell there's, you... a v, there's a VB, isn't there? Isn't there a VB on offer or something? No. Try getting it out, go ahead. There's a VB for sale, 1980. The one that won the Australian Touring Car Championship, the Brock drove. That's what I had written down, and I changed it to this. Yes. So that... I actually had it right in the first place and went backwards. No, no. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I'll tell you what's happening. That one is going for auction. The one that sold for $2.1 million was an 82. I think it was a VH. VH, yeah. That sold two years ago. It's not the same car. Everyone's putting pictures up of a VB selling itself for 2.1. Perfect example of like Chinese whispers, Jordo. You see an internet m meme. You see an internet meme, you know, on social media and you're like, fake news. The VB won the Touring Car Championship. I don't think it was a Bathurst winner. Different type, not that, it, not that it hasn't got good race her heritage, but are they expecting this to go for even more, are they? 
Well, I think they're just trying to lay some bait, obviously, to get in. In today's, uh, you know, the COVID tax climate, it probably will get, it probably will go for a fair bit of money because that was the first Commodore, remember, of EB. You don't see that many of them anymore because they weren't popular, you know, 15 years ago to modify, so they all just went to the wreckers. Now, Luke, we mentioned the Toyota Yaris last week, how they were doing the, uh, the discount for the first 1,000 cars. Six days they sold them out. Here, nine, bitadum, here, nine, bitadum, 150 sold 1,000. You had to leave Gone. the $1,000 deposit? Yep. Gone. Gone. So these 40 grand nugget Yaris's went out the door, bang. Apparently 300, what is it, in, in three hours or something. So they were already sold. And then they were saying they weren't sold, there was still 100 left. But then they were offering, uh, I don't know how right this was, they were offering another deal at I think 45 grand. Because they still haven't come out and kind of clarified what the full pricing will be. These cars probably also won't get here for at least another month. You probably won't see them on the road for a while. But it actually shows you the demand for a car, a performance car, with an actual manual gearbox that's lightweight all-wheel drive. Well, didn't they say it was uh, Toyota's first all-wheel drive car in 20 years? That would be right, wouldn't it? Yeah, they haven't had one since the GT4 Celica. Oh, you mean... And Sal they also said... Jordi. You mean Sa the Salica? Oh, yeah. Salica. Toyota Salica. The Salica, yeah. Mm. Got to get that right. Oh my God, yeah, Mountain Dew! And they also said they didn't... They, I was watching some video about it. They were saying it's not a Yaris that they them just modified. It's an actual the, total ground up car. Yes, I believe that's different. right. Mm. Whereas a lot of these performance cars are kind of... They're based on the base package and then they kind of just modify them and, you know, turbo the engine, that kind of thing. Apparently, there's... There's not much of this car that has anything to do with this factory one, so I'll be keen to see them. Gay! I think they're going to be tiny, obviously. Interesting to see how this little three cylinder. Shorto. Gets, gets going on the road. Enough crapping on about this crappy Yaris. Just get to the next bit, will you? What's this? Just get a regular Yaris and put a Renaissance engine in it. Quality advice. All wheel drive rotary. That'd probably fit in the bay, yeah? Not not good looking. Looks like a lawnmower with an engine and wheels. Yeah, Can't pretty... believe so many idiots would spend their money on this death trap on wheels. So this bloke thinks it's a death trap. So I looked it up. Has a five star in cap rating. So apparently that's a death trap. But anyway, hey, that's better. I guess, than, uh, that's better than the... drive, driving around your seventies tin can. Better than the old Mustang, isn't it? Sad thing is, other than driving in a straight line really fast, these cars are useless. They don't steer, they don't drive slow, they drink fuel. Stupid waste of money. Yeah, because I'm sure the owner is thinking about the fuel economy of hang this thing. Let's just back it up. So this guy clicks on a video that says drag racing in the title. I don't know about you, but there's no turning to the left in drag racing unless you're coming off the end of the track. And No, it's, look, it's Pro Street Blown Drag Racing APSA, which is Australian Pro Street Association. Mm. What was he expecting yeah. to say? So hang on, he's complaining that a purpose-built drag car doesn't go around corners. And apparently it's got bad fuel consumption, because yep. that's that's all they're worried about, the MPGs. Now, that is 100% bait. That's bait. I saw today, the Supra, I think they're, I think they're called an A90, the new one. Already getting quicker over in the States. Titan just would have reeled off a 928 and 146. It's gonna be some kind of a record! Not bad for a BMW. What do you reckon? Not bad for a BMW. It's not a Supra. All these people that are never gonna buy the car anyway, what does it matter? Never gonna buy the car. I'd put it to you, Joro, that a lot of these uh, internet experts about that have never even driven the old one. No, probably not. No. And, and I reckon if they took one for a spin, they'd realise it's a, a very good car, well-designed, well-packaged, does everything pretty well. Like, as if you're going to mm -hmm. hop in and go, oh, no, 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 I'd rather my old 90s uh, car, uh, car with a, you know, lazy power band. I mean, what are they on about? I don't understand either how, why, why aren't you just glad that car manufacturers are at least still bringing out performance cars? Yeah, the same, they're the same people who complain that they don't want electric cars. And they'll complain mm. that, you know, there's crossbreeding, i.e., um, you know, Subaru and Toyota and that sort of thing. It, it's happening more and more. Yeah, exactly. Be thankful. Exactly. Then, I don't know, mate. Just buy another 90s car if that's what you want. 
Probably can't afford, afford that either. It's gonna, if, you, if you can afford a 90s car. Like I said last time, I, I had another two people uh, send me RX-8s this week for sale. Now, what do you know? Shock, shock horror. Both of them don't even have an engine in them. This is really just cementing, uh, you know, the yearning to own an RX-8. When you're buying a car, it doesn't even have, it doesn't even come with an engine, and it's well, how old's the car? 15 years old. Yeah, well, actually, what years were they sold for? You should know. You aren't you looking them up on car sales every minute? Uh, I, th I think the first ones are 2000, they, around 2004, three, 2003, okay. 2004. But, but as, it, as if you get other cars like that that are 15 years old and the engine's long gone. Oh, the engine's mm. blown up. Just, just ripped it out. Come on. I don't know. Well, uh, what is this? Melbourne Council's push to slash speed limits to 30 kilometres an hour. Now, what is that in miles per hour? Seriously, what? About three. 22? Is this the pedestrian council? I guess. Has to be. What's his name again? Harold Scrooby. That's it. Good old Scroobs. Scroobs. Yeah. Isn't there like 25 different council people saying, you know, we live in this area, therefore we own the roads, so we can dictate the speed limits? How about GGF and just leave that to Vic Roads? Seriously, why do you need 30 km hour speed limits? They've got them around Collingwood. You drive around a few times, you get, you're in second gear and the car's like chugging along. A group representing 26 Melbourne councils. Do you let me guess, they're all inner city councils? No, Jordy, uh... It's ca calling for councils to be allowed to set the speed limits on council-controlled roads. So normally, would Vic Road set these, would they? It'd make up an estimated 83% of roads across the city. The forum, the forum argues the current process, which can... Uh, here we go. Which requires councils to go through, through Vic Roads to set speed limits is too slow. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Let's back this up a bit. The local councils are complaining that the red tape is too slow. Can you believe have it? They, have they the place which is the king, king of red tape. The king of just screwing people over. Something that should take a week takes six months and they're complaining there's too much red tape. Unreal. Hey, one of the local councils, Geordie, is where I live. What, the, for the 30Ks? Yeah. The only thing too slow are these insane speed limit proposals. To say they have received a little pushback is a small understatement. God forbid we ever teach people how to actually drive a car. Just keep dumbing down. It's just idiocracy, the movie, isn't it? What is it? Trying to put a squ square peg in a round hole? Hmm? 30 k's an hour in a manual car. Forget it. That's not third gear. That's second. And you're probably just limp. And it's almost engine braking. Like you're limping through second gear. It's not designed 30, to 30 30 k's. It's not designed to 30 k's an hour. 30 k's in any car is insane. Perhaps abolishing local government altogether would be a better solution. Yeah. Politicians and bureaucrats need to get the hell out of our lives. I'm all for safety, but I'm sick and tired of the BS. Why don't we start pushing our cars now? 100%. Stick to collecting rubbish. Exactly. That's all councils are needed for. Yep. You know what I love about local councils? They could send out a petition, uh, a survey, sorry. And it could be 100% no, we don't with the speed limits. And they'd still go, oh, we'll put the speed limits in. They keep giving us another reason not to visit Melbourne. May as well go back to horse and cart for this sheer stupidity at its finest. Why stop at 30, so true, to be completely safe and avoid all risk? We should just drive at 1k an hour. This only happens in Greens Council areas. They all hate cars. Actually, correction, they hate everything. More suggestions from the green lefty socialist morons who want to control everyone else. Letting these idiots make these decisions instead of Vic Rhodes is completely inappropriate. Hey, Jordo. 100%. How about addressing the problem of people crossing roads, etc. with their heads down, looking at their phones and taking no responsibility for themselves. They can't even walk alongside inside a shopping centre without bumping into people. I've, uh, I see that all the time. Okay, boom. You know, I take the kids or whatever for a walk or down to the park and I don't mean to be sexist, but it seems to be women. They, they walk like this holding their phone on loudspeaker, either listening to music or having a conversation. It's like, have you not heard of earphones? Oh, you can't just, just talk on the phone. Get some earphones maybe. Like, no one wants to listen to your rubbish. But they all walk like this. Luke, we have got round two of a leg opener. The Lambo from last week. Everyone was saying they couldn't understand the plates. You know how some plates, you see them and you get them like that? And then other plates you're looking at for 25 minutes and you're like, I've got no idea. 
That plate, because everyone said 99% of people, I don't know what they're talking about. I looked at it, leg opener. I don't know. Straight away, that was easy. Oh, I, I can't, I'm not great at plates either, but I can't comment because I saw the title yeah. of the article mm -hmm. kind of before I saw it and, I, and it gave it away. It's like, well. My first reaction um, was, you know, you laughed. How, how funny is that plates? That's a lot better plate than half of the ones in Queensland where they, uh, you know, would, the bloke who like... They're the, the, Geordie, they're the hardest place to oh. read. Queensland, I'm selling a plate for $30,000 and I'll just, instead of letters, I'll just use numbers. Because somehow... Numbers, ba backward, or f a fours and A, all this crap, and then act like it's a perfect plate and it's worth money. Piss. I know. I'll, I'll put a three in because that represents an E. <laughs> yep, okay. The, the bloke, he's a barrister, isn't he? He says he believes it struck a chord with for two reasons. Number one... People are sick and tired of having had a gutful of being bullied by governments, being bullied by overzealous bureaucrat desk jockeys, flexing their muscles and throwing their weight around, he said. The second reason, people have had a gutful of this political correctness mob who are constantly trying to dictate to all the silent majority what we can say and what we can't say. People are sick of all that BS and when they see somebody push back and stand up to bullies, they stand up and cheer. Well, I hope this bloke gets uh, gets these plates approved because apparently it got thrown out on technicality and they've just gone back and issued another, you know, letter to say you got to, you got to hand him over. So he's going to fight it all the way apparently. So we'll see where this ends up. He probably doesn't have a leg to stand on because at the end of the day, the government can do whatever they like. Yeah, with plates though, you don't really own the plate, do you? You kind of just... No, it's not really yours, mm. so... It doesn't stop people from buying... It is a ridiculous... It doesn't, it's a ridiculous story. It doesn't though. make sense because you kind of don't own them in the fact that Vic Rhodes can take them off you at any time, yet you can go and sell the plate for an enormous amount of money. Billions and billions and billions and billions... I'm gonna find my man, dude!